Hey guys, in this video I will do a breakdown of the Vulcan minigun model in Houdini. This is the first part of the video where I will show you how I modeled parts of the gun and also share some tips and workflows. And in the second part I will show you how I rendered this model and I will also talk a little bit about rendering in Houdini's mantra. There is a lot to cover so let's jump right in. Ok, so here's our model. So the first thing I want to talk about, like, first when I started learning about modeling in Houdini, all, all the tutorials I saw, everybody was modeling all the objects in one node. And so I choose this approach. But then I figure out, like, if I want to select a part of the model, it's just a complete mess and I, I don't know where, where to search it in the network and it was just really tedious to find where, where the parts were so um, you see like this is, this is just a huge network and it's really difficult to find where, where the part is so if I would do it now I would choose a different approach and the thing is that I would model each part separately as I will show you now so I would do it like this just make one object do adjustments to it like this for example and then I'm happy about it and I'll just make a new object and now what you can see is that it is much more easier to handle and much more easier to find your objects and it's just more manageable and don't worry about like if you want to combine it in in one object in the end you still can do that uh, you just need to select all the objects and press combine i will show you, which i will show you later and now you have the advantage to isolate objects or just show ghosting of other objects and it's just really easy to manage and as I said if you want to combine them all in one you still can do in modify combine and now they're just one one object which you can manipulate easy as that Also, if something like this happens, that your material are black, even if they aren't supposed to be, just go into that object and temporarily set the display flags to something else and then put it back there. So this worked for me. Now, let's get to business. So. I'll jump right in into the minigun model and we'll check it part by part. So the first thing is the gun barrels which was a fairly easy part. Um, as you will see mostly I used just cylinders and then just copied them to a circle and then used other cylinders with booleans and yeah that's just about it so this is just a simple circle poly extruded and copied to line points and I adjusted the line points a little bit so they're not even so you can add more more circles if you need to and then I use the poly extrude to extrude this edge so easy as that and I use the poly bevel to round the edges then with the boolean I combine them with the other central cylinder together and then cut cut it a hole with another cylinder which was smaller so a fairly easy part and this is um, this is a technique I used for a lot of the parts in the model. So just just simple simple objects and combine them boolean maybe do a simple adjustments with the edit tool. Now this barrel I copied to points 
and for the template I used a circle with six sides so very simple so nothing too special also another boolean and I used um, grouping for to group like the edge edges to bevel before I knew that there's actually like an ignore flat edges um, function in the bevel node so now I can do it with uh, with one click and you know if, if your model looks messy don't worry about it it's just a normal just put in a normal node and it will be good again so that's just a normal thing okay so the next part uh, are the barrels also very simple just cylinders copied to points and I booleaned the inside of them and I could do, I could have done it in other ways but this was fairly fine so yeah this is how I did the barrel this was one of probably one of the easiest parts Now the next part is this thing on the attached to the body of the gun. Also, I started from from a cylinder, merged it with another one, did some adjustments, and this peak node I use quite often. It just pushes the model along its normals, so you can make kind of inflate the model. And now I use the knife tool to cut, cut just a part of the of this part. And then you know just simple simple extrudes. And this was also kind of interesting if you need um, to make a triangle or cir circle just delete it and you can use uh, fill holes with uh, triangulate fan or if, if it works for you quad quadriangulate <laughs> the fan so and as for the most part I used poly bevel at the end with ignore flat edges so it just bevels the, your hard edges now again I'm using a knife tool to cut out just this part and I, I used um, copy relative reference from from the first one so I have the angle the same on, on both knives so they're pe perpendicular to each other and now I can adjust this cut out as I want to do a simple extrude and this is also an, an interesting function uh, if you turn on transform extruded front now you can you don't have to push it along its normals you can use uh, the transformation tools to to modify the extrude as, as you want to so this is also really handy And you can change the mode to global or local, whatever suits you. And again, just just a bevel. And at the end, just some normals to make it more prettier. But you can do it in the end; doesn't matter. And this was, wasn't that special part, but I wanted to show you how you can uh, connect the edges. And you could use like, like an edge loop tool, but if you want to connect just some particular edges, you can do you can use the divide node. And I'm using a, um, an asset. I think it's from Animatrix, and it works a little bit better than the standard Houdini divide edges tool. 
so what you can do is you, you select edges and you add division and it if you check the make edge it will make an edge like sort of like connecting edges so I used it on this part even though I could use an edge loop on it because it goes all the way around but I found that like, this is this is a really cool tool and I like to use it and I wanted to show you okay so the next part is the main body of the gun and as you can see it's also just a simple cylinder so I started with with the, with the cylinder as you can imagine and then position it with the transform node and then use a lot of poly extrudes to get the shape I want nothing really nothing too fancy and this is a thing I, I tried like uh, to use uh, the boolean node with the shatter so so I can get this kind of procedural ridge on the body I would, I would group the edges based on the intersections and then I would use a something like a bevel node to bevel or extrude to, to add a procedural ridge now you can see it's, it's divided the edges are separated and with, I used fuse to connect them together then I added a poly split somewhere on it used edit to adjust vertices that I mean points and then I use the, this bevel for for the ridge and if I would mo move the grid now uh, the the ridge would move according to the intersection and you can also play with the profile of the ridge but you can't see that much in, in this video and of course some normals in the end some beveling of the edges and the lid for the lid of the main body I, I just split some some, some primitives and then cut it and used used the poly extrude and rounded the edges with a poly bevel and you can adjust it as much as you want add more or less divisions and just a standard poly bevel in at the end okay so the next thing is is this part which I believe kind of holds some cylinders we can check it if we get to the end so yeah this is a holder for some sort of cylinders and see that part And I start, started with the box, adjusted it, transformed it so I can put it where I want to. And then I used the, the body of the main gun with the boolean and you know just standard modeling, extruding, edges, edits, and in the end you get you get something like you've seen. And I use the symmetry at the end and this is a, the asset you can also download from Orbolt it's free and you can use also like a knife tool or just a mirror tool in this case but uh, this asset comes with handy presets so you can set it to different axes very quickly and you can also move the center um, mirror pivot so some something sort of like you would have in, in 3ds max with the symmetry tool
So now you see I can move the pivot. So it's a it's a handy asset to have. But not, not a standard Houdini tool. And this is the next part. It's also just some part that's on, on attached to the main body. And again, just same old thing with a box. Edit it. Now this, this is the standard Houdini edge divide, which you can add some edges to your model. Even in this case, it doesn't play a big role. It was, I think, it was mostly for just ali alignment purposes. So I can snap align that part to to the main body. And this is the bottom part of of the this this part, which I used a cylinder and did some adjustments to it. And in the end, just a boolean, and also some splits, and the standard bevel at the end. And also, I use the divide node to so I don't get uh, ingons. But I will do that as a final thing on the whole model, so didn't have to do that. And this is the back of the main body, also just a simple cylinder. Booleans and the same trick with with the rich procedural and that's about it for that part. Now this is also kind of an interesting part. For this I used uh, some some primitives from the from the main body. I cut it blasted uh, or deleted some parts I don't need and use a lattice and you can control it you can control the cage with this if you insert edit notes on, on, on at the bottom of like this at this B box X4 and now you can manipulate it and that's a cool thing like you see it the final product and you can still adjust it how much you like to no problem with that but the the top part didn't have all the vertices or all the points selected so that's why it exploded a little bit and again just standard modeling with some extrusions use the transfer extruded front for this to push it on the z-axis to the back so uh, so I was sure like it's it's straight now this this was an interesting part as you can see like the most interesting things will be the the helix uh, the helix part For, for the main holders, uh, uh, it was also pretty standard procedure. Some boxes, edits, and splits, extrudes. So nothing, nothing super fancy. So pretty standard stuff. And I used the cylinder for the for the pins or I don't know what yeah like the pins that they're holding these two parts together and I use the peak node to push them a little bit out and then boolean the the hole in the holders and I added some some more little cylinders to to this pin to add some, to add some detail and boolean them together and even though Probably I didn't have for the bottom part, but for the hole at the top I had to. And this will be the hole for the uh, helix thing. Helix circle or ring or I don't know what it is. 
and for this I used um, a line and now that's like 100 points and now I used some some vex coding to get the um, helix to get it formed into helix and it might look a little bit intimidating but all it is is uh, just a sinus function on the point numbers and one is a sinus for the x position and one is a sinus for the z position cosinus for the z, z position and the uh, other things you see it's just uh, I ju added just a spare parameter so to just control the frequency and the size and here you can see what I basically did so I just uh, changed the position of the X by sinus of the point number and now I'll change this to cosinus and this is the basic expression I'll just comment the other stuff so it's not valid and this is what you get so just a really simple expression so let me just copy it to the side so I don't mess my model so yeah this is what it is and you control now the number of points or, or the length of the line to get a longer helix with this you get uh, more turns so now with this I'm getting the height and with this I'm getting the turns and as you can see I get all every time I get uh, the same number of points for my turns and this is why I added the spare parameters if I change it to the sinus, you know, I'll just get this diagonal, um, like a curvy line. So this is why you have to use one sinus and one one cosinus. And now um, these are just uh, spare parameters, which which are basically multipliers for your values. So you can just type in channel brackets. Um, explanation um, this 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 uh, two two marks and put the name of your parameter and bracket and semicolon and just push the just push the button on the right which is like spare parameters and it will it will create a new spare parameter for you like this and as you can see I get a new parameter and these are there because I I, use, I just copied the old wrangle node and they stayed with 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 the old one so this is what, what you can do and I, I will put it in into the YouTube description so you'll have access to this code so you just paste it in and press the spare parameters and you'll get this perfect helix and another thing you can do is you can also use a resample node at the end to get like a more more points and you can control it with the length and one thing you can also do is like uh, treat, treat the line a uh, subdivision curves so it will it won't subdivide it to a straight line but it will subdivide it to a nice smooth curve and you see you can you can play with the helix letters and now just set some values 
and you see your helix is forming in front of you so really easy to do helix and you can also save this this as a preset so you don't have to memorize it or type it and if you want to delete the spare parameter just go to more and delete spare parameter and it's gone so this is it and as I said if, if you use uh, straight edges you it will be resampled as a straight edge and if you use uh, oops, subdivision curves it will you will get a nice round curve and you can add more more uh, divisions to your helix And you can do springs, uh, well, I don't know, whatever you need. And then I just use a sweep node with a with a circle. This is for the profile. I'll just change the radius and this is your ring, your helix ring. And now you can still adjust the height, uh, add more turns if you need to. And with the resample node, we'll still get like even even edges on on the helix. That's that's really nice. And at the end, you can use you can use a polyfill, so you get a nice uh, clean clean cap at the end. And then just use bevel at the end, fuse any extra points. And there it is. And the greatest thing of all is you can still still change the parameters and fit your helix ring to the pin. So you can still adjust all the shape. So this was actually a really, really fun part to do. You can adjust yeah, the thickness, whatever you need. You know, add, add more turns. This this is this is really great. I <laughs> really love it. Okay, so the next part was another cylinder at the at the side of the main body. Again, nothing too special. Just 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 some tube with extrusions this part was also fairly easy just a box added some splits deleted the polygons extruded it so I get like the shell and then extruded this these parts at the end use the symmetry node to get this the same on the both both sides and I use sometimes uh, I get like a reverse normal so you can use this reverse node just put it in and it will reverse your normals and this is this is also some holder at the end at the end of the main body and same old thing just, just some box with some adjustments extrudes Poly splits, bevels, and the great thing is like if if you don't like your bevels, you can always adjust them, add more, sometimes even add more divisions. Depends on how how your how your part is set up. And this was at the front of the main body. It's it's just just holder and some sort of protection ring at the front started I started with a tube 
and then use the group node to delete the bottom part in case I would change my mind and wanted to add more and more divisions so I wanted to keep it a little bit procedural and these are also the uh, the screws at the, at the end of this holder also fairly simple just just box with some edits and sp split edges and booleans and bevels and you can use a transform node to put it in a place This is also one of those simpler parts. Okay, so this was also a little bit interesting. Some sort of screw. And I really liked that I could uh, procedurally control the the in, indent of, of the screw so i started with also with the cylinder copied it by 120 degrees so i get this kind of flower pattern then use the boolean to combine them all together fused it just to make sure there, there are no open edges and use the polyfill to close the shape and now now I boolean it into another cylinder to to get this indent and as you can see I think I can still control it I can control the shape the depth the the size of it I can control this this inside like flower I can add more if I want to change the scale but now it penetrates so to push it a little bit back and use the bevel in the end and as you can see it's still procedural you can still play with it if, if, you, if you don't like the shape so that's really handy and just add normals in the end and uh, divide the extra edges and it will, it will look good or you can also like add your own division with the poly split or own edges with the poly split uh, node but it's more tedious and this is the top holder part for for the gun which which you would grab with your hand hand and hold it and i started with a simple curve and then transform it to a form form i liked i used the poly bevel on the corners and i can still control the bevel radius and then i use the sweep note to to sweep sweep a profile on that curve and just skin it to create some this kind of rectangular tube and use the poly bevel to to soften the edges and as you can see you can still control it procedurally that's really nice you now for for some reason you find out like you have two little divisions or you want a more rounded edge you can still do that and it's really great now the cables cables were done also in a similar fashion I just used a a simple curve a NURBS curve now this is the final look for the cables and the great thing is like you can still play with them you can change the shape to whatever you like 
add more divisions, less divisions, and control other parameters. So I started with this curve and put it into place with the edit node. And as you can see, I can just grab grab the points of the curve and and move it to any position I like. This is also really handy if you turn on point snap. You can snap it to to some point, so you 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 have a easier time to align it. You can just align it to the center of, of this. Snap it to the to the center of this cylinder, and there you go. You can just adjust it. So it looks more natural. So this is, this is really handy. The, the snapping in Houdini works fairly good. I really like it. Now, uh, Houdini crashed on me a few times while recording this video. But fear not, I believe it's because I started to model this in Houdini Apprentice and then I switched to Houdini Inde and I think it has something to do with this that once I revert back to Apprentice license it has some sort of problems or maybe with, with the old version I don't know but it just crashed on me a few times but, but I think it should be okay now, and when, once you're done with, with your curves, you can resample them to get some more points. And you can also use, uh, on next thing you can use is the sweep node with some circle and you, could, you can use this automatic skinning. For this simple object, it's fine. And then I just used the normals, which I didn't have to, I could use it in the end. but. I had to use the re reverse node to reverse my normals again for some reason they were reversed and that's how I did the cables as you can see now again some of my parts are black not really sure what happened but you can just change the flags and it will return to normal now and for the bolts i used i first of all i just created this symbol bolt as a separate object and i merged it this is how i created the bolts this is the bolt object and i just used uh, some simple tubes and boolean them together, use the edge, edge divide to connect the edges to get a better topology you will see, in the, see it in a second and just use the group node to group the border edges and then with the divide I added more divisions so I get this, this nice mold fuse the, fuse the points just to be sure, added some bevel and in the end I added, added just some transformations and uh, out, out note which is just basically just, just a simple null note which contains no information so when I go in my main, main part I can use an object merge and I can reference to that out note And then I used, uh, then I just used the transform node to position, to position my bolts. And in Houdini, you now have this uh, handy snapping pivots option. So if you press um, the column or semicolon, you can you can just snap your object to. To a face or edge point, whatever. Then you can just rotate it like this, and your bolt is perfectly aligned. So 
is rotated and now it's it's aligned to your surface Okay, so and for this bolt, I basically did the same. I just aligned the the first bolt, and then I used a, a copy node to copy them in, into a circle. And for that, I had to adjust the pivot of the copy node, and that was about it. And then just set the number of copies and rotation angle and that was it the same for these three bolts which are a little bit hidden but yeah here they are and then I just merged all the bolts together and merged them with the rest of the model Okay, and this uh, handle thing was also pretty interesting to make. It was fairly procedural, so that was really fun. I started with a grid and just adjusted the edges and then used the lattice to, to skew the back part a little bit and then used the bend modify, bend the note to, to bend the plate obviously a little bit and yeah it can be a little bit tricky at first um, the thing is you have to set the capture direction and also the capture length these are your two parameters to make it work and then you can bend it as much as you want I used a uh, a bevel to bevel bevel the bend a little bit and then extruded these plates and beveled the edges and now you, as you can see this is the beauty like now it, once it's set up you can you can just adjust it the thinner thicker bend it more or less add divisions to the to the bend bevel and basically do whatever you like so I really really enjoyed parts like this which I could modify later and just make them fit perfectly and you can turn off visuals visualize fall off to get rid of the the gradient so this part was a really interesting one and you can you know you can always go in anytime you want and just just adjust it Now, and the final piece was this grip. Uh, at first I was a little bit scared of how, how I will do it, but actually it turned out it was fairly easy and also I had a quite a procedural control about it. So I started with uh, this kind of uh, curve, which I, and then I used the close option to it, so I get a polygon and then and I adjusted the points and after that i grouped just some specific specific points uh, on the on the polygon or primitive and i did these these groups and after that i i put a bevel node on this these point groups and just uh, adjusted the offset, adjusted the divisions to anything I liked and I think I jumped back to and forth between adjusting the points on the original curve primitive shape and adjusting the, the ra roundness of the bevels and the number of, uh, number of divisions 
and after that I I use the, the bevel to bevel the edges a little bit and then I use the divide node to so I get rid of the hand guns and if you if you turn off the this poly bevel now you see I, I'll get I get some errors but if if I turn off the the poly extrude I can I can play the poly bevel yes this this note I can play with the divisions or with the bevels to, to control my topology a little bit so I don't get too crazy triangles and this this was really really super cool and in the end just use a, a fuse node to fuse any extra points and a symmetry to symmetrize it and here's our handle and for the trigger I started with a simple box and this was also pretty cool I added a group to group some edges which will later be my crease edges so I used this this um, edges and that put a crease note and then subdivided it and now you see I get this sharp sharp edges and I get this nice rounded trigger shape and in the end standard just poly bevel normals and I use the peak to push it a little bit outwards and then cut a hole in, in the handle as you can see and in the end I just merge the original uh, trigger with the handle Okay guys, so this is it. Thanks for watching. Hope to learn a thing or two. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And this is the end of the first part. And in the second part, I'll show you how I set up the materials and how I rendered this uh, minigun. Thanks for watching and see you next time.